Another staff member, Suzanne Bronx, Charlotte Gerson's niece, at one time was diagnosed with inoperable cervical cancer. I did the therapy 19 years ago, and so I can sit here and say that I'm a success. Many recovered patients visit the Gerson Institute regularly to donate their time to encourage others. Paul Sklessy. I was diagnosed with prostate cancer in 1990 through the rectal exam, the sonogram, and a biopsy. It determined that I had three sections of the cancer, malignant cancer, in the, in the prostate, and therefore they wanted to take the prostate out the next day. I told them that, don't call me, I'll call you. I didn't want that removed. I then searched for cancer agencies, alternative cancer agencies, and they found Gerson. And I talked with Gerson Institute, and went to the hospital in, in Mexico, and talked with the doctors and the patients. After three months, I found that I was losing weight very readily, lost 27 pounds, and after 18 months, my, P my PSA showed 0 0.06, which to me was, was the end of the treatment. I was cured, the doctors thought I was great, he said I had a better PSA than he did. I'm not an easy one to get along with because I'm a maverick. You can tell me something, but I don't believe you until, you know, Dowling Thomas. I put my hand in, okay, now I believe. The Gerson Institute gave me the life back. Dr. Gerson discovered early in his research that vegetables and fruits must be juiced to flood the body with nutrients that have been lacking within the human organism for so very long, sometimes for decades. A particular type juicing method must be utilized, however, implementing a grind and press device. When the vegetable is inserted, it is pulverized to the point that the fibrous cells in the vegetable are ripped open, leaving a mush that falls onto a cloth, ready to be pressed. Once the pressure for approximately one ton is applied, all the vegetable's available nutrients and living enzymes flow out, giving a potent concoction of nutrients. When juice is drunk, it can enter the bloodstream almost as fast as alcohol. This juicer was originally designed in the 1930s by a scientific researcher named Dr. Norman Walker. Dr. Walker maintained that when we provide live organic nutrients to our bodies on a consistent basis, the result would be not only vibrant health, but ideal longevity of approximately 120 years of age. Dr. Walker died on June the 6th, 1985, at the age of 117. The effectiveness of the juicing is obvious. An enormous amount of nutrition can be captured in a glass of juice in minutes, and within a few more minutes be flowing within the veins of the patient. If this same amount was eaten, it would take hours of digestion, and much of the nutrients and enzymes within the food would be burned up in the digestion effort. Dr. Gerson required his patients to drink one eight-ounce glass of juice 13 times a day. As you can see, an entire day's worth of juices is equivalent to an enormous amount of food which weighs in at a little over 20 pounds a day. But they don't just drink juice. In addition, the patients also enjoy a cornucopia of delicious organic foods that exceed their wildest imaginations. Not only is the food colorful and tasty, but serves as a complement to the juices and is once again an organic medication straight from the table of Mother Nature. But just eating different is not enough. To heal a seriously ill patient, nutrition is only half of the equation. Resolving the accumulated toxicity in the body is the second half. You gotta die from something. As detrimental to health as a cigarette symbolizes, there is a Pandora's box of poisons and stresses on the body that are just as bad, if not worse than cigarette smoke found in day-to-day -day life. The lifestyles we now live have us dying while we are still alive and see to be healthy. It is slow, relentless. Realizing this, Charlotte Gerson included a chapter about it 
in a book about the Gerson therapy that underlines, in layman's terms, the principles of the Gerson therapy. Within one section of the book, environmental stresses that can lead to cancer are underscored. Types of these hits are in the most surprising places. Our exposure to talks in today's environment borders on the absurd. It is practically impossible to avoid. It is analogous to dodging bullets in a hail of gunfire from multiple machine guns. Not only are there poisons we ingest, but stressors such as electromagnetic fields and microwave radiation that interfere with the body's own electrical circuitry and rearranges molecular structuring, causing damage, sometimes irreversibly, to the brain and other organs. A typical example of daily toxic ingestion or precursor hit would be when you get into your automobile prior to even starting the engine. You will have already ingested dioxins given off from the dashboard to the fancy fake leather seat. Suppose you continue your journey and stop at a motel for the evening. Perhaps you chose an unsmoking room. However, someone else has taken the parking spot in front of your room and left their car idle for a short time. Even for a few minutes, a nightmarish mix of airborne toxins in the car exhaust have slipped into your room from the space under the door. Once inside from the power switch activating electromagnetic fields, to the microwave radiation leaking from the oven as it prepares your plastic wrapped, heavily salted and preserved, nutritionless instant dinner, to the carcinogenic chemicals and the soap on the bathtub rim, you are inundated with hits. The soap and shampoo are just the start, however, of what will be absorbed through your skin once you turn on the bathtub faucet, which will provide chlorinated and fluoridated water to help you get clean. Chlorine and fluorine help destroy the thyroid gland. The toilet seat has been sanitized for your protection. But what does that mean? The residual toxins in the chemical cleaning process of the seat will be absorbed by contact once you sit down. The toilet paper will also smear chemicals from solvents to dyes into your bloodstream. The towels use chemical detergent residues that will be activated once they hit the moisture of the skin. At the bathroom sink, you may actually drink the chlorinated water from a cheaply manufactured plastic cup that allows serious toxins from the plastic itself into the water. The freshly painted wall and its vapors are nothing compared to the plywood and the continuing emission of formaldehyde gases. Over to the lamp to get a cup of coffee to relax. It is coffee that has been sprayed with chemical poisons grown inorganically. The artificial sugar and the artificial cream adds a nice touch to the mix. The good news is that you're not going to use a cell phone to receive or place a call. It was a cell phone. Repeated, lengthy uses have shown to interfere with and challenge the neurotransmitters of the brain. The amount of radiation from the TV will be small, but when the TV set is discarded or incinerated, it will come back to you via the air, water, or food. This room contains a brand new carpet. The outgassing of chemicals for the next six months is extremely hazardous to body tissue if inhaled. As we finally turn off the light to sleep, the electromagnetic field from the clock next to your head will almost imperceptibly influence the slumber and dreams one hopes to have. Even the film to make this movie uses extremely poisonous chemicals in its manufacture and processing. As ridiculous as this scenario may sound, it is one more hit for your body to fight. The good news is that most of these toxins can be removed with strict adherence to the Gerson therapy. But how is this fully accomplished? The answer is organic coffee. Dr. Gerson discovered that if a patient drank more than a pint of juice a day, the powerful enzymes would dislodge poisons in the body's cell systems. And this is where the coffee comes into play. Once the poisons are dislodged into the bloodstream and absorbed by the liver, the liver can become overwhelmed and even damaged unless it gets some help. Dr. Gerson found that an organic coffee solution introduced rectally stimulates the bile ducts in the liver to essentially dump captured free radicals and pathogenic poisons into the colon for expulsion through the rectum. When coffee enemas are utilized in conjunction with juice drinking, it is detoxification at its finest. The immune system will now have the upper hand 
in destroying cancer or other degenerative conditions. But how does one make a coffee enema? It starts on your kitchen stove with a quart of distilled water. Three tablespoons of drip ground coffee are dropped in. After a few minutes, the burner is turned down and coffee is left to simmer for 15 minutes. Once the coffee is done, it is strained into a measuring cup. Additional water may be added to make up for water lost in steam in making the coffee. Coffee enemas are best taken in a relaxing atmosphere to ensure maximum effect. And once the coffee cools to body temperature, it is poured into the enema bucket. A tiny plastic stopper at the end of the hose is slid back to release the air in the tube. It is then slid back in place to stop the flow of coffee until rectal insertion is accomplished. The hose clamp is readjusted to at least 8 inches from the end of tube for rectal insertion to that length. Once the coffee solution drains into the patient, it is retained in the colon for 12 to 15 minutes. During this time, the liver has a chance to absorb the coffee's caffeine and other agents. Simultaneously, the liver in turn excretes poisons into the colon for expulsion. Charlotte Gerson is not only responsible for keeping alive her father's principles of healing, but guarding the integrity of those fundamentals and their application over the years. Hundreds of holistic physicians in the United States and around the world have been trained by Charlotte and the Gerson Institute. Unbelievably, it is illegal in the United States to treat and cure a diseased patient in a hospital with Gerson therapy. Because of this, Charlotte had no choice but to establish a hospital 27 years ago in Mexico. Because Charlotte resides in Southern California, it is easy for her to drive regularly to advise and encourage the endless numbers of patients that arrive at the hospital in Tijuana, Mexico. Under the care of a staff of physicians and nutritionists, most patients who come in with inoperable cancers and with no hope of recovery leave within one to four weeks to continue the treatment at home. And usually on leaving the hospital, they are well on their way to recovery. Many patients experience the disappearance of their tumors while at the hospital, and the patients pour in from around the world. In the making of this film, one cameraman accompanied Charlotte on a random day without any patient at the hospital aware of what was going on. The hope was that at least one of the patients would not be shy and would agree to appear on camera. Charlotte and the cameraman were not disappointed. <laughs> 